This is a video to help you through the activity on carbohydrate metabolism. Metabolism happens in the body through a series of connected reactions called a pathway. The figure in front of you is an example of a generic pathway where A, B, C, D, and E represent molecules, reactants, products, and intermediates. Please pause the video now and use this diagram to answer the questions on the first page of your activity. Now let's see if you've labeled this diagram correctly. This reaction is written from left to right, reactants on the left, and products on the right. So A is the overall reactant and E is the overall product. The other molecules, B, C, D, are intermediates. An intermediate is the product of one step and a reactant of another. For example, intermediate B is the product of the first step but the reactant of the second step. Anything that's not an overall reactant and not an overall product is called an intermediate in the pathway. The enzymes here are E1, 2, 3, and 4. These are the enzymes that catalyze each step of the reaction pathway. Equilibrium arrows are shown in steps 1, 3, and 4, but step 2 is not an equilibrium arrow. We'll call this a non-equilibrium arrow. Equilibrium arrows represent reversible steps. Reversible steps go in either direction. Since step two is shown with a non-equilibrium arrow, this is a non-reversible or irreversible step. All of the molecules in this pathway, reactants, intermediates, and products, are connected. You can use Le Chatelier's principle to predict what will happen to any of the intermediates, reactants, or products along this pathway. For example, Le Chatelier's principle, which suggests that if I increase the concentration of A, I would shift the equilibrium in the forward direction. Therefore, I would make more B, B would be converted into C, and I would make more C, and so I would eventually make more D and more E. So increasing the concentration of A would eventually result in the increase in concentration of E. However, if I increase the concentration of E, I would not increase the concentration of A because step two is irreversible. Therefore, if I increase concentration of E, I would push the equilibrium in the reverse direction. E would be converted into D, and so concentration of D would increase, and D would be converted into C, so concentration of C would also increase. However, C cannot be converted back into B, and so the concentration of C does not affect the concentration of B or A. Pause the video now and make sure that you've answered the questions on this page correctly before moving on. Now let's look at the diagram on the next page of your activity. One of these figures is the overall of glucose catabolism, and the other is the overview of glucose anabolism. Please identify which is which. The first figure shows glucose being broken down into smaller pieces. A six carbon piece in glucose is broken down into two three carbon pieces of pyruvate. And these are broken down further into molecules of carbon dioxide, containing one carbon each, and molecules of acetyl-CoA, where the acetate group is only two carbons each. The first figure here is showing glucose being broken down, or glucose catabolism. The second figure shows pyruvate, three carbon piece, being converted into a larger piece, glucose, and glucose being converted into glycogen. Glycogen is a storage polysaccharide for glucose. This figure is showing the overview of glucose synthesis from pyruvate and glycerol, or glucose anabolism. Please pause the video now and answer the questions on this and the next page of your activity. The breakdown of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate is called glycolysis. We'll learn more about the glycolysis pathway in a moment. Here, glycolysis is represented by this arrow. Only glucose goes through the entire glycolysis pathway. However, other monosaccharides can be used for energy. For example, galactose can be converted into glucose. When galactose is converted into glucose, it can then provide energy for the cell. Another monosaccharide that can participate in glycolysis is fructose. As we'll see later, fructose is one of the intermediates in the glycolysis pathway. Fructose enters the glycolysis pathway about halfway through. Only glucose goes through the entire pathway of glycolysis. However, fructose can enter about halfway through the process. 
Glucose is a six carbon piece and through the entire metabolic pathway or the entire glucose catabolism represented in this first figure, the glucose is converted into two carbon dioxide molecules from the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and four more molecules of carbon dioxide through the citric acid cycle. All six carbons of glucose end up as carbon dioxide through the complete catabolism of glucose. The most important part of this process is production of energy for the cell. Energy for the cell is represented by ATP, or the energy currency of the cell. There are two ATPs that are produced during glycolysis. There are also two ATPs that are churned out in the citric acid cycle. So each molecule of glucose can make two ATPs here and two ATP here. In addition, these other energy molecules of the cell are produced by the citric acid cycle. Each glucose will produce two FADH2 and six NADH from the citric acid cycle. These molecules go through oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transfer chain in the mitochondria, and they produce 28 ATPs from this process. Overall, the catabolism of one glucose molecule will yield 32 ATP. Now let's look at anabolism. In our bodies, glucose is stored as a polysaccharide glycogen. Our bodies store glucose as glycogen, and then they simply hydrolyze this back into glucose so that glucose can go through the glycolysis pathway and through the citric acid cycle and produce energy for the cell. Through breakdown of polysaccharides, the cell receives very quick bursts of energy, and it's easiest to get energy out of polysaccharides. Pyruvate can be converted into glucose. The process is called gluconeogenesis. Pyruvate can be converted into glucose, but glycerol can also be converted into glucose. Each of these molecules are three carbons each, which can be combined into the six carbon molecule of glucose. Take a moment now to make sure that you've answered the questions on this page correctly using these diagrams and your understanding of metabolism. The next part of the activity will focus on the process of glycolysis. In this figure, glycolysis is highlighted by this yellow arrow. Although it's represented by one arrow in this figure, glycolysis is actually a 10-step process. It's its own metabolic pathway. Here are the 10 steps of glycolysis. This looks complicated, but when broken down into each step, it makes a lot of sense. So let's see if you can follow along with me. Glucose is the molecule that enters the glycolysis pathway. Glucose is converted into this molecule here. This is the first intermediate in the glycolysis pathway. The difference between glucose and this intermediate is a phosphate group. This phosphate group came from ATP. ATP transferred its phosphate group onto the alcohol of glucose, and it produced a molecule of ADP and this molecule. This is glucose with a phosphate group in the 6' prime position, and this is called glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by hexokinase. The next step in the pathway is catalyzed by phosphoglucoisomerase. This enzyme converts one isomer of glucose into another. This is the glucose isomer. Notice it has a six-membered ring. This molecule has the same molecular formula, except it has a five-membered ring. This is fructose. This is fructose that still has a phosphate in the six prime position. So this is called fructose six phosphate. Now we transfer another phosphate group to this molecule using ATP and converting it to ADP. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called phosphofructokinase. It puts a new phosphate on the one prime position of the fructose. This molecule is called fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Bis meaning two phosphate groups. The next step of the pathway is to split this six carbon molecule into two three carbon pieces. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is aldolase. It produces two three carbon pieces, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and its isomer glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is an important part of this because this is what enters the next step of the reaction. These two things are isomers and there's a special enzyme for converting the dihydroxyacetone phosphate into another molecule of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. The overall result of the first five steps of this pathway are that you use one glucose and two ATPs 
and you get two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and two ADP molecules. In the next five steps of the reaction, I'll focus on the metabolism of just one of these glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. But since there are two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates made in the first five steps, the next five steps will have to happen twice. In the sixth step, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is combined with a phosphate group from solution and NAD+. A phosphate group here is transferred onto this carbon, and hydrogen is lost. Now this molecule is called 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. This phosphate group only stays on the molecule temporarily. Its real purpose is going to be to convert ADP into a molecule of ATP. In the next step, this phosphate group is transferred to ADP to make ATP, leaving a carboxylate functional group behind. This molecule is now 3-phosphoglycerate. The next step of the pathway is for the remaining phosphate group to be transferred from the third carbon to the second carbon. This leaves an alcohol functional group on the third carbon and the phosphate group has moved to the second carbon. This is now called 2-phosphoglycerate instead of 3-phosphoglycerate. 2-phosphoglycerate is dehydrated, which means that there is a water that will be removed. The atoms from this water come from the alcohol group that's circled here and the hydrogen on the next door carbon. This hydrogen and this alcohol group are removed to make water and a double bond is left between the two carbons. This molecule is called phosphoenol pyruvate and now this is the last intermediate in the glycolysis pathway. The remaining phosphate group will be transferred from this molecule to ADP to make a second molecule of ATP, and the product is pyruvate. The net result of one cycle of the last five steps is use of one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule, one phosphate, one NAD+, and two ADP molecules, and it yields a pyruvate, an NADH, energy molecule and two ATP energy molecules. This is from only one cycle, but since there are two glyceraldehyde molecules that are produced in the first five steps, the last five steps have to happen twice for one molecule of glucose. So this whole process happens twice. The net result of the entire process of glycolysis of one glucose molecule is glucose in 2 ATP, 2 NADH, and 2 pyruvate out. Please focus on understanding the net results of the first five steps, the last five steps, and the overall net result of glycolysis. What happens next? Well, it depends if oxygen is around or not. Here's another figure or a map of metabolism from your textbook. Let me point out that the 10 steps of glycolysis are abbreviated here in the conversion of glucose to pyruvate. And if this figure were completely accurate, it would actually show that there were two pyruvates produced from each glucose molecule. Now, if there is oxygen around, your body cells will go through aerobic metabolism, which means that pyruvate will be converted into an NADH plus and an acetyl-CoA and a carbon dioxide. And then the acetyl-CoA will go through the citric acid cycle and make a lot of energy for your cell. If there is not a lot of oxygen around, your cells will go through anaerobic metabolism. They will actually use an NADH molecule and they will produce lactic acid or lactate. Most of the information that we will be focusing on is aerobic metabolism. Both of the metabolic pathways are discussed in your textbook, so please make sure you understand the difference between anaerobic metabolism and aerobic metabolism. The figures that show overview of metabolism in your textbook are specifically focusing on aerobic metabolism. Anaerobic metabolism is not shown in this figure. Thanks for watching this video on carbohydrate metabolism. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to post them in the comment section. And if you found this video helpful for your learning, please let me know by giving me a vote.